we'll leave this meeting. We'll go into executive session meeting, but why don't you do a roll call going into executive session? Did, did I hear a motion? Yep. And do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Bob Halla? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Drew Pierce? Yes. Bill Cantor? Yes. Melissa Novak? Yes. I'm going to get yeah, oh, there. You went back on. Okay. Sorry. And Lynn Roberts? Yes. Okay. So, okay, guys. 503. Give me a second to just finish typing and I'll meet you over there. Okay. How we. Are we all back? Judy, can you see if everybody's Sorry. back? Are we missing? Seven, eight, nine. Oh, we have everybody. Hold on. No, Allison's here. No, we're missing. Here she is, Lynn. Hey. You, we noticed you were missing. That's important. I didn't, though. Sorry, Lynn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just remember, you're being recorded, young lady. <laughs> so I need a motion to accept the MOAs. Uh, motion. Ooh, Mr. Chairman. We got a uh, motion, a second, and Judy's going to do a roll call. Uh, Bob Hallow? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Judy Pierce? Yes. Phil Cantor? Yes. Melissa Novak? Yes. Lynn Roberts? Yes. There you go, Bob. Thank you. So it's passed. Are you happy, Allison? Uh, next, we have two policies to discussion and vote. Um, we usually talk about them, but I guess these are pretty precedent type of policies. So we have two of them, and Darius will just go over them. So, um, just on policy, so we could do a two a double. So I was talking with our, the attorney this morning just for a clarification on this. You can waive the double reading of a policy, the the reading and then on one meeting and the voting on another meeting. Um, you know, if you feel that the policy you know doesn't require um, the the time between the two kind of things. I, basically, the, the committee can vote to waive um, a reading session before a voting session. Okay, and that's and that's kind of you know if it's considered an either emergency policy or time presents that the fact that you need the policy in place prior to the next meeting. Our meeting, we have a meeting next Tuesday, so we don't have to break that today. But if you also these these are very straightforward policies, so if you want to waive and just vote vote them tonight, you can also do that as well. So I'm just kind of giving you kind of the kind of the background on that. Um, it's a little bit different, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm going to encourage the 38 to vote them on Thursday because I'm not bringing another 38 meeting together for two policies. You know what I mean? Um, that in, in a, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, that's why I'm sharing, uh, I'm saying that now. So the first one is space covering policy. Um, basically it's just, we need a school committee um, approving that the fact that we are, we have a policy regarding face coverings and um, you know, what kind of face covering the, the policy goes through that they will be worn by all individuals in the building. They should cover their nose and mouth. That it's basically, that it's made of at least two label, layers of breathable materials. Those of you at home who are watching, this doesn't seem like we have a big crowd, but that doesn't, gator masks do not work. Okay, so those single sleeve ones that we all bought in the beginning, I bought for my kids who showed up here and they were kicked out. Um, if students obviously show up without the proper mask, the school provide them, not only the medical ones, but we also have um, ones that the community members have made. Um, so, you know, bandanas aren't acceptable. Um, and then it talks about, you know, um, you know, if it's, you know, uh, students who have challenging or, or it's challenging to wear uh, masks, you know, um, procedures for that. It also talks about when there'll be mask breaks during mask breaks, eating, drinking, during um, outside and while well, students are outside. So there's, you know, kind of explaining out those kind of things. Um, and that's, you know, the, the families are, you know, are asked to provide their own face covering. However, the school will provide masks if needed. Um, and then if there's violation of this policy, the, the principal will consult with the parent and guardians to determine whether um, there, an exception is appropriate or the student may be removed from the school building for in-person learning 
until such a time they can comply with their requirement um, or the requirement is lifted. So, you know, there are other, you know, there's other areas of the, I would say more other areas of the nation. I don't think we're going to see that as much in, in Western Massachusetts where students are challenging the First Amendment rights on that. Um, you know, I'm prepared to, I have to, where my stance is on this is that um, we're setting up guidelines that are going to keep our building safe and masks are about share the safety of everybody else around you um, and that we're going to enforce that. And so, um, you know, that policy is, say it's coming from school committee as well. I've also asked the town board of health to um, also vote um, our uh, a mask policy for the building. So it's also enforceable by the board of health so that there's a little bit even more kind of teeth that this is not, you know, we can require students wear shoes in the building. We can require students wear a shirt in the building. And for this school year, we're requiring students wear a mask. In the building. So kind of any questions on that policy? Do you want to vote them both at the same time or one individually, Darius? Let's vote them both at the same time because the roll call vote is a pain in the butt. Okay. It, unless oh. the committee wants to do otherwise. <laughs> um, the second one is the, the remote learning. Um, this, so uh, um, MASC sent us a list of policies to be voted on. I got more coming. Um, we're going to kind of space them out. Um, that we should, you know, going into the school year, we should have a remote learning policy. This is coming right from MASC. Um, and basically talks about making sure that, you know, our remote education is looking at, you know, all the different types of students we have, making sure that we're um, meeting with all the stakeholders involved as we create remote learning, um, a remote learning experience. And just really, you know, it's a, it's a long document of making sure that we do all the things that we're doing within our remote um and within our remote planning so it's a little backwards i know maybe you put the policy and then we, we we put a plan to the policy but um it's basically it's holding our policies hold our district to a standard and this policy is making sure that we do all those things in our remote plan and right now it is all in our remote plan, but if we were to suddenly try to remove something um someone can say your policy says that you'll be doing this um yeah you all had a chance to read it as well. Again, um, do we have an addendum that we have to? That's part. There's of There's an addendum that they they send along as well with it. <clears throat> um, basically, answering, making sure that we, you know, that we reach special education students, English language learners, physically challenged students, homeless students, students in foster care, students in military families, students pregnant or parenting students. Um, and then facilitating collaboration to move any barriers around collaboration and then protect students' rights and parents' rights regarding FERPA, Privacy Acts. You know, so all those things that we're considering in, in our plan, um, it's just basically um, outlining this. Um, it, you know, it, it's clearly a boilerplate one because it's talking about when would you use a remote plan? And we talked about that right now for this year. I think in the future, it's going to be interesting after this year's, you know, when we get through this, because we will get through this, folks, um, and things get better, um, what remote learning will look like. If, it'll be, if there'll be a change in how we do education, maybe remote will be, you know, something that continues, not just snow days. Maybe there's going to be days where students are remote. I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see where we go with it eventually. Um, Got to have the positive in this, because I know there's a lot of negative around this right now. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to move to waive the waiting period, the reading period, and move directly to approve these two policies as presented. We got a motion. Any dis other, any other discussion? Missy, you have something? No. Mary? Um, I wanted to know, are you sure that a position note is required uh, for an exemption? If you look, um, hold on. If you look at one of the highlighted links, I think it was the first one with Governor Baker's order. Um, hold on. Um, a, a person who declines to wear a mask or a cloth face covering because of a medical condition shall not be required to produce documentation verifying the condition. I wrote a written note from the physician is required for requested exemption. 
that's what that's what this one's particular. So you're saying there's in conflict of, of right. So I think without a written note from a, a physician, you're going to have people saying, you know, in the policy at the bottom under the legal reference, it says it's not required. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. In our in our policy, so our policy would be stricter than the state's policy because we're going to require that because we're going to create if students are coming back in the building, um, and we're going to have a safe environment. Everybody's going to be wearing masks unless you know there's an so extreme. I that you have to follow the legal ref reference. That was my question. Do you have to follow the legal reference? I don't know. You got me. I don't know. Um, if you want, we can pause on that and I'll ask legal advice and we can vote it on Tuesday. If so we can vote it and if we need to re-vote it. Let's do it. That's an even better idea. Let's vote this policy and if I need to update the language on it, I'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Spoken like a bitch. <laughs> Missy, do you have anything? Did you have anything, Missy? No. no. Okay. So we have a motion to second. Any other discussion on the two policies? If not, Judy. Uh, Bob Halla. Yes. McFarland. Yes. Lynn Roberts. saying yes right sorry i'm not looking yes okay uh mary raymond yes melissa novak yes bill smith yes bill Cantor. yes judy pierce so that was just to waive the reading period correct yes now you we're going to roll call the votes yeah you have to do both sorry you're weaving no, okay. okay, so can I get a motion for this? So move, Mr. Chairman. Can I second it? it? Yep, thanks, Bob. Okay, roll call vote. Bob Halla. Yes. Keith McFarlane. Yes. Ben Roberts. Yes. Mary Raymond. Yes. Melissa Novak. Yes. Bill Smith. Yep. Bill Cantor? Yes. Judy Pierce? Yes. Great. Thank you. Now, if anybody doesn't have anything else, anybody have a, any other questions and, and we'll see each other next week? Motion to adjourn. Second. Done. Roll call vote. Yes. Just the first thing. Oh, yes. I accept that. Thank you. Five fifty-seven. Good one. Thank you. Yeah. Darius, I'll be.